Dropbox keeps telling me that I'm running out of not next cloud yet. Dropbox keeps telling me that I'm running out of space. What I could do is I could say, I am going to write a script to see if I go in Dropbox, right? If I go in Dropbox, um, I, I mean, this script would obviously be in a file, right? So what I mean is I would, I would write uh, something like this. This is an example of a script, right? I'm going to write a script. The script is just going to help me check regularly. I want to check how my Dropbox file fills up, right? So I'll call this uh, file ICT1110 or something, uh, dropbox.sh, right? Um, and then I will, I don't know if this is how I create the shebang here, but uh, bin sh or something. And then somewhere here, I'll just say, I am going to do a du minus h. Come on, really? I'm going to do a, a du minus du minus h maximum I think it's maximum depth is equal to, I'm just going to say one here, right, of this thing. I don't know if maximum depth is, the maximum depth is, uh, it's, yeah, it's two words or something. So I'll, ch I'll just check where this interpreter is, right? SH, so it's in here. So I'll write a script, right? And usually, if you remember, I mentioned that scripts, scripts are associated with uh, scripting languages. What you discovered during our discussion of tra translators, or language translators today, is that um, some language translators, um, well, a specific category of language translators are called interpreters, right? So typically, the scripting languages you use would have a corresponding interpreter. This is what I'm looking for here. This, this thing here is the interpreter, right? That I want to use to run this, the commands in here, right? So somewhere here at the top, I'll just say, I'll put that here. I think this is how the shebang works, I don't know. And then what I'll do is, I will just say, why? I'll just say, I'll just say, I want to make this script executable or something, right? So that when I, I run this now, I've written a script, right? The script the instructions associated with this piece of software that I've just created, the script, uh, is encapsulated within this file here. I've made the file executable and I can run it like any normal application. In fact, I can go there and double click it. But right now I'm just going to run it on the terminal, hope this works. I'll just say this and then it's going to show me. What, is, what this script would do maybe is every time I run it, it shows me. Oh, Lighton, look at this. If you look at your Dropbox folder, um, this is how space is distributed. And then if I realize to say, well, this is not very helpful, Mr. Script or Miss Script, um, what I would want to do rather is I would want to perhaps uh, visualize what's happening here relative to two levels, right? So I want to see uh, all, all nested directory, directories up to the second level. So that when I run this script now, I'm going to see all the files two levels after Dropbox, right? Which is why I'm seeing I'm, I'm, I'm interested in Dropbox, but I'm seeing everything after Dropbox, two levels, one, two, one, two, right? Yeah? So this gives me an idea of, oh, if I'm running out of space, then I see that uh, I appear to be using quite a bit of space here in the directory, Dropbox documents work, right? And then I'll be able to do the usual things here, scripts, right? So this is what, not that I was expecting you to say, oh, this is how you create, not that we were expecting you to say, to write down, you create a script by creating a .sh file, and then in there you write a command code. Do you know? That's what we're saying. We're just giving you an example. A system administrator will do something like this on a server, for instance. A server that they are managing routinely, right? Pro to proactively make sure that everything is running smoothly. 